super uh, an atheist, correct? Yeah. Okay. People have been debating. Uh, that's the devil. That's the devil waiting for you in hell. By the way. Would you want to debate the existence of sure. God? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Ricky Gervais, is it, why is there something instead of nothing? I, that's, that's, that makes no sense you at all. You have to answer that's, my question. That's not the two choices. No, it's but it's the choices I'm giving you. I'm the host. Well, I don't. You, uh, you want to concede the debate? Why is there something this, instead this, of nothing? Hold on. Yes. What do you mean out of nothing? What do you, do you Why is there something instead of why is there nothing? Why, why does the universe exist at all? Why but, is there something? But surely the big question is not why, but how. Well, why is it relevant? Okay, it? fine. How, how is there something? Because you think of God as the prime mover. How is there anything? Well, well, I don't. Of I don't. This is this is a, a ridiculous. Is there a premise. prime mover? If, if is, you, there a, if, is there a demiurge that started everything? Well, outside science and nature, I don't believe so. Because the, the interesting thing is, the, this is the thing, right? So, I, I'm an agnostic atheist, technically. A, agnost, a, agnostics um, mean it means. No one knows whether there's a God. So everyone's technically agnostic. We don't know. That's true. So that's true. an agnostic atheist is someone who doesn't know there's a God or not, as no one does. So you're not convicted of your atheism. Well, I am. Sure. No, I am, because atheism is only rejecting the claim that there is a God. Atheism isn't a belief system. Mm -hmm. Atheism, so this is, this is atheism in a nutshell. You say, um, uh, there's a God. I say, can you prove that? You say, no. I say, I don't believe you then. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you believe in one God, I assume. Uh, in three persons, but go ahead. Okay, so you believe... Okay. So, but there, there are about 3,000 to choose from that have been, you know, people who believe in... I've got some reading, yeah. Okay, yeah. so so basically, you believe in... You, you, you deny one less God than I do. You don't believe in 2,999 gods, uh -huh. and I don't believe in just one more. Right. <laughs> Do you, do, you, uh, do you ever have a feeling of great gratitude for existence? I know, of course. Do you I, ever have I a, know, I know, I know the have, chances are yeah. billions to one that I am on this planet as me and never will be again. And I know uh, I can't convince you that there, there is a God, nor do I really want to convince you there's a God, but no. I can only explain my experience, which is that I have a strong desire to direct that gratitude towards something or of someone. Of course, no, of yeah. course. And that, I mean, thing, is, that thing is God. We're more, we don't, we, we want to we make sense of nature and science. And, we, and it's too unfathomable that, 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 that everything in the universe was once crunched into something smaller than atom. But you don't Three, know that. Well... <sighs> You're just believing but, Stephen but not, Hawking, but, and that's a matter of faith in his yeah, abilities. The, yes. You don't know it yourself. You're accepting that because someone told you. Yeah, well, but science science is constantly proved all the time. You see, if we take something like any fiction, in any holy book, in any other fiction, yeah. and destroyed it, yeah. okay, in a thousand years' time, that wouldn't come back just as it was. Yes. Whereas if we took every science book, yes. right, and every fact and destroyed them all. In a thousand years, they'd all be back, because all the same tests would be the same result. That's good. That's really good. So, we That's don't... Really good. I don't need... I don't need... I don't need faith in science. I don't need faith to know that probably, if I jump out of a window, every other time someone jumps out, they smash to the ground because yeah. of this thing called gravity. And I don't, then, yeah. Satan would be raping you. <laughs> this is why I'm a good boy. Ricky, uh, please come back. You know, when Rufus is running shit, you know, doesn't surprise me at all. How's, it, how's everyone been, man? Pretty good. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to set this, um, the, uh, settings on this so that you just automatically get the host. Mm-hmm. I think I did. I did change it last week, so any of y'all could start it. Could start the meal. All right, that's what's up. When did mm -hmm. you learn how to do that? You know, about a year ago. Yeah. I just don't want to relinquish my <laughs> power yet. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, disrespectful not yet. piece of. Not yet. Shoot, I'm gonna holler at you after this, man. Okay. Yeah. Kel's gonna try to get back in shape, my man. Oh well, no. I my man's okay. huffing and breathing like yesterday when we were walking. That's no Damn. Thing. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Damn. It, it was struggling, bro. We were walk, walking two blocks and he was done, just like LeBron. No, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even think I made it to the corner. I thought you so, walked that punk ass dog of yours. LeBron. Getting locked in the house is doing all of that. Shoot, but I'm coming back to the end of this month. 
I get my I get my shot on the thirteenth. We're gonna I talk. Get my, I, don't, I, don't I get my to, second one on the twenty fourth. Okay. I don't want to take up too much time, man. We'll talk offline. Yeah, I got you. Hey, Black Zeus, you want to tell your um your uncle your uh Uncle Ruckus, <laughs> Uncle Tom, Ben Carson, Clarence Thomas story real quick? So I keep it simple. Um, I was talking to a client who's in finances about the book Capitalism, uh, about the book about the myth of uh, capitalism that we just finished reading. Uh-huh. And um, somehow the conversation got political a little bit, you know? Of he, course. Where, where, you like know, that. he's talking about Trump and this, that, and the other. Now, mind you, I found it a little bit contradictive of a person who works because the reason I brought up the book is that he works in finance. He is a financial advisor Mm -hmm. for millionaires, you know? And so he, he should understand capitalism, understand the financial um, area, you know, pretty well. Mm -hmm. And um, basically I was saying, well, you, you know, basically we got into the whole talk about Trump for some reason. And I was like, well, I understand how Trump won because Trump spoke to the working class where Hillary didn't. And Trump also, you know, uh, spoke to the those investors where Hillary didn't, you know, so that's how he got the Electoral College. He's like, no, that's, that's, it's because all the people that voted for Trump are racist. And I'm like, really, dude, you're telling me all of the people that voted for Trump are racist. I'm like, that's not possible. You know, you can't tell me every single person is like, you do realize people have their own issues other than just voting for a president to keep the black man down. I'm sure they, they exist, you know, but that's not the majority of them. And he was like, um, he's like, why you vote for Trump? I'm like, I, I'm not, you know, I'm like, I'm not a Trump supporter, you know, but I'm, I'm at least willing to have an objective conversation about why people did vote for Trump, you know, and, um, um, whole thing is I was like, if all people that voted for Trump are racist, how do you explain all the black people? And I'm like, um, I, and he's like, um, telling me, well, that's because they're ignorant and they weren't reading up and this, that, and the other and blase, blase. I'm like, so he didn't speak to their issues. Maybe they have other issues that they were concerned about. You know, there are black Republicans. You do realize that, right? You know, and he's like, well, they don't know what they're talking about, this, that, and the other, you know. They're all a bunch of Uncle Toms and this, that, and the other, blase, blase, like Ben Carson. And I'm just like, dude, like, why is no one allowed to have a different opinion than you because they're black? You know, not all skin folk or kin folk. Like, you never heard that before? He's like, well, you sound like one of those Uncle Toms, too. And I'm like, word, word. He got so mad, he just stopped talking to me and shit. You had your client called you an Uncle Tom. Yo, it was crazy. I was like, all right, my dude, I'm going to let this shit go. I'm going to walk away from it. Well, he was. I'm assuming he's black. Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> but mind you, he swears he swear he this street thug. He swear he this dude from the streets because he's from Philadelphia. And I'm like, dude, you know, I I, I know street thugs. I know niggas. Right? You ain't a nigga. You you is one of them dudes that like you know you just happen to live in yeah. the hood. Just happen to live in the hood. But Maybe that wasn't, nearby and shit, yeah. you know. Like you visited, you know. He might but be you hood. ain't you ain't the you ain't the thing. You know what I mean? You ain't that. He might be hood, but he don't really sound educated. No, he's in his emotions. Yeah. Everybody everybody's well, a racist. I'm very selective in regards who I talk politics with, especially like at the workplace, because um I don't know. I think for the most part, people broad paint black people as a monolithic group. And a lot of times when you push back on the narrative, it just seems to default into your Uncle Tom, your Sambo, which the proper term should be be Sambo. If anyone ever read Uncle Tom's Cabin, you know, the sellout was Sambo. Um, but yeah, it's just like people always um, resort to those inflammatory terms to call out someone like, like you said, a difference of opinion. Hey, bro, I'm sorry. Did you lose him as a client? Um, well, you cut it. <laughs> He cut his contract with me, um, so I don't know. Like, he might be in his films for now and then come to – I mean, he actually – like, the whole thing was I kind of laughed off what he was saying and stuff, and um, basically he then he put some sort of post on Instagram saying, like, um, if you say something offensive and you put LOL behind it, doesn't mean it's not offensive. And I'm just like, oh, you really in your feelings. 
uh, I've seen people say do stuff like that. Like Damn, you right. really in your feelings? You gotta go on Instagram and let the world know. Like you know, I'm just a like, dude. You know, for some tough guy, you you know, you real sensitive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just, I mean, if you look in any other, I guess, uh, workplace, you can't really let somebody's political views affect your decision. I don't know. I, mean, I usually okay, avoid it, bro. He doesn't, yeah. <laughs> Schubert doesn't feel the same way I feel. So now I'm just not going to go to his gym anymore. So the nigga has to agree with me in order for me to go to the gym. Man, yeah, that's I- why. But Kel, bro, Trump was one of those polarizing figures where, like, I was reading some off the wall chain stories where family members stopped talking to each other during his presidency. I've heard that too. <laughs> family members, bro. I've heard that too. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, my man ain't that bad for family members to be not speaking to each other, but it is what it is. All right, fellas, I know. Black Zeus is short for time. Kelvin's always short for time. And my man Smith is short for time. So let's get into some news. What, yeah, hey, yo, Smith, what you trying to say? And, and Pradley's just short. <laughs> it's so disrespectful. <laughs> Dream like Martin, lead like Harry, fight like Malcolm, think like Garvey, write like Maya, build like Madam C.J. Walker, speak like Frederick. What's the last one? Cash, be careful. It goes all the way down to his dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Last line says, Smith, Smith like keep there. going. He's like, keep last going. The, last, says, the last line says put it in your mouth. Yeah, last <laughs> one says suck like <laughs> pinky. <laughs> I can't let this nigga this. Yeah. Like Smith, like yo, keep reading, bro. Keep reading. Yeah, suck like J <laughs> Fire. <laughs> oh, oh, nigga, Smith man. got on a dress, bro. They got like yo, keep. Going, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I can't with you, man. Oh lord! All right, man. We're just gonna focus on three news stories. Uh, there's a lot that happened this week. Immigration. I want to talk about what's been going on with the border and shit like that, and so much, so much. But I don't know. I figured these three stories could be satisfactory enough. So, um, I sent you guys the news story. Sorry, I didn't send it last night, so you guys can actually read it. But Better late than never. Um, I'm going to start off with the first one. Um, This is from NPR. Illinois City is the first nation reparations program draws complicated reactions. Evanstown, Illinois, made news last week when it passed the local reparation housing program aimed to providing compensation to black residents for slavery, segregation, housing discrimination. It will provide $25,000 in home ownership, improvement grants, mortgage assistance to qualifying black residents, um, Adelman Ruth Simmons serves as the National African Reparations Commission, says that the housing program is only the first step of a larger reparations plan. So in the article I sent you guys is just several people giving their feedback. Um, it's a mixed bag. A lot of people feel like it's not enough. Some people were clearly is echoing what um, Mr. Adelman um, Robin Sue Simmons. I don't know if that's a man or female. Um, Adelman, I don't know if Adelman is a female. Either way, that doesn't matter. I just want to say politically correct with the pronouns. Um, <laughs> um, but either way, she's, you know, they were echoing the sentiments that it's just the first step. So I, I like it. Um, I think definitely it's, a, it's the right first step. If anyone read the book, The Color of, um, Color of Law um, by Richard Rothstein, which was written by a Jew, ironically enough, um, he talks about um, segregation and um, redlining in America and how black people um, most importantly was left out of several neighborhoods throughout across of America and obviously the biggest wealth in our society is generated by housing um, so I think this is a ni- nice step in the first direction but there's more to be said so round um, thoughts fellas see I'm trying to figure out how do they how do they determine which black people get reparations? So they're just tracing your lineage back to uh, slavery? I, I don't know. They, they, they In the article, that was left out. Do you actually have to see, live? 
You yeah. had to live there. No, you had to live there. You had to live there from um, 1937 and 1964 or something like that. Yeah. So they're only Would giving you- it to the to the elderly. That money, you only it's only for housing. It, well, no, it's only for housing. Uh, yeah. Um, and it's only if you're going to live in that community. You can't live Correct. on the outskirts. It's some bullshit. Okay. It's some I, bullshit. I, I don't like the idea. Um, they're giving them money and then they're saying, uh, this is how you have to spend the money. So the money is actually never touching the hand. So it's not a full reparation. What they're doing is they're saying, um, the bank has this money for you and you got to get a house to this bank and go basically in debt and shit. They're See not that? giving you $25,000 and it's only $25,000. It, yeah, so. it's a $25,000 credit. See, I don't know, man. I just, yeah. Like, who's getting these reparations? Because we're so far removed from slavery. If somebody gave me $25,000, whether it's for a house or a car, even tells me how to spend it, it would, for me, honestly, it just feels like, okay, niggas just giving me a free $25,000. I'm not going to feel like, oh, well, you know what? I finally got the, the, the justice that I deserved from years of slavery. Like, the reparations should have been happened where, it's okay. Maybe my grandmother was a slave and I could see how that affected my mother. But at this point, however many years later, especially knowing that people just go and blow the reparations on some bullshit. It's just like, yo, what's the point? Unless they're going to do something like, okay, we're going to give you reparations and we're going to put it in a, a, a Roth IRA. We're going to give it to every black you know, the person who turns 18, give them 25K and just let it grow until they turn to be, you know, 55, or set them up like that, or 59 and a half. But aside from that, man, I mean, look at what this stimulus checks is for. People buy nonsense with that, too. Well, I try not to. Oh, my bad. I don't want to jump the gun. Go ahead, Black Zeus and Smith. Thoughts, fellas? Smith? 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 You there? No, he can't hear. Go ahead, Schubert. Oh, oh well, Smith, Smith, you there? No, I can't. Hear. I thought I gave you my thoughts. Yeah, go ahead, Schubert. No, yeah, I want. I wanted me? more thoughts. My bad. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so, the whole thing is the. So, all right, let's start with where Kel um, left off. I, I agree with Kel. Like, there's such a far removal of the the logistics of just figuring out who is old reparations and who's not, you know, that is a hot mess. And then the whole thing is, is that it all depends on the mindset of the person that you give those reparations to. If you give that 25 K credit to like, let's say myself, Pradley, you know, or, 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 or Kel who understand how to flip real estate, how to make investments, how to make money that can be a, a big game changer. You see how my man left Smith out of that? <laughs> Smith doesn't, Smith didn't, I haven't heard Smith talking anything about business, so I don't know what Smith knows and what Smith doesn't know about that area. I'm sticking to what I, what I know he talks about. If, if we were talking about, if we talking about art, we talking about the street game, we talking about history, we talking about this, I know Smith is on point there. I mean, so I'm not just going to throw you know, Smith in there, like whether that's it for Smith, it might be like, yo, give me a 25,000 credit towards opening a school on art and this, that, and the other so I can educate my black children. See what I'm saying? Everybody got a different mindset. So anyway. Fair enough. Go ahead, Schubert, my mistake. Um, but the whole thing is, is that it depends on the mindset. So that's why I was going to come circle around the whole thing. And so the thing with the home it might work for somebody like, you know, me, Pradley, or or, 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 or or Kelvin, who understand, all right, flipping a home, this, that, and the other. But you might, uh, if you come up to a Smith, he might be like, yo, give me that credit to open up some sort of program for educating these kids on Black art and how to make their own T-shirts and how to start their own hustle doing that, this, that, and the other. If you give it to Raheem, he might just be like, yo, let me go buy this Lexus, you know, or let me blow it on Amazon. So... I think you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You know, I think it's just like, yo, if they really want to do it, it's like, yo, just say, we are going to give you this uh, either a stipend or a, you know, a a check for X, Y. And like, yo, you know, let 
let it be what it is because there's those that's just going to blow that opportunity and those that's going to flourish from it. You know, you cannot change the fact of we are where we are right now. Um, I, I'm going to say one quick thing. Well, Smith's going to have the last word. Can I say one quick thing, Smith? You're Brother, here, Smith. I, just, just say what you got to say, Bradley. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't I like your... hear you. I <laughs> I don't like to, I, um, I, you know, I, I differ from you and Kel's thought in regards of this idea of people wasting money. I think reparations, reparations, regardless. I, I like, I don't care if that's that person's and want to spend it however, it's spend it however. If, there, if there's a way for that person to, to prove that they're descended of slavery, that, that person is owed that justice. I don't like just just cause, man. It's just the right thing to do, especially when you talk about other facets of people who 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 have been given reparations in our country. Um, in regards to the housing grant, I, yeah, I I agree with Smith. It doesn't seem like there is contingency as to how that works. Um, I don't have the perfect solutions to how reparation works. Uh, I mean, how reparations should look like. So that's why I kind of said, like, you know what? It's a good first step. But um, I think I don't care how far it is, man, because it's just like when you think about the wealth inequality gap that's in this country, yo, and how it really creates, like, how it really derives in this country from housing, that, yo, it's old, bro. Like, you're not going to close. Like, there's a study that shows that by, you know, even if you were to keep white people stagnant for the next 200 years, like they, there's no progression, black people still won't advance economically to catch up to the wealth that was acquired in the past 100 years that afforded white people. So it's just like, and when you study, like I said, the color of law or the color of money, you read those books, like I can't, I don't care what people spend their money on. You got to give it though. In some shape or form. Yeah, so ahead, she said man. to the people who's given what they owe, what are we owed? I don't feel like we're owed. But like anything. my thing is like for like the grandmother, like well, Smith yeah, Grant's old, old, Actually, you're, you're old. You're old. Forty acres and a mule, Henry. That's what the fuck you're old. And they yeah, want to relegate that shit to twenty five thousand dollars. But so they say old forty is it? That's what every slave was supposed to get once they went into slavery and slavery was abolished. The motherfuckers came up out of it. Every slave was supposed to get 40 acres and a mule. They didn't yeah, get but, that shit. But so wasn't... now the equivalent of what, excuse me, gotta get my sign. The equivalent of um, what 40 acres and a mule would be nowadays, they can't give that to people, right? Um, that would be too much. But to, to relegate it to say $25,000 and when you all did this with the um, the, 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 the descendants from um, the Pearl Harbor shit, you mm-hmm. didn't say that you gave them the money. You gave them the billions of dollars. You didn't say this is what you have to spend your money on. So exactly. mm-hmm. I piggyback ask the people who got to spend their money on. First of all, the reparations have to go in taking out the redlining and all that shit. So it's not just reparations about money because fuck the money. Motherfuckers want the land that was stolen from them. That's what we really want because that's where the money comes in at. And so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people choose to spend their money on. But the reparations should have been, it should have been taking place a long time ago. Every other place got um, their reparations. Now, I do uh, what uh, Black Zeus was saying. As far as, you know, you know, you're looking at the rabbit hole, you're trying to figure out well, who gets reparation because now you're starting to have mixed races and things like that. However, the same thing that they did with the, the nickel Indian. They started calling themselves, white people started calling themselves Indians to take over the fucking property. That's what's going to happen with this reparation. System. So you do have to find that little part where it's not muddy and murky, but every state mm-hmm. now is going to figure out how they want to do reparations as opposed to the federal government stepping in and saying, hey, Maybe we need to just step in and do it like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I think it's old. I just don't know what it looks like. It's a complicated conversation for me because I don't, you know, you're just going to have difference of opinion of what it looks like. But it's definitely my old. Thing is, in, my, in, my, my, in my humble opinion, it's definitely old. I mean, my whole thing is I understand that, you know, why it's old and everything. And I understand it could be a game changer. But the whole thing is, you know, to me, it's like giving... 
a person a tool, but they don't have the knowledge or the education or the experience to use that tool correctly. It just seems like almost a waste of a tool. That's my whole thing. But the thing um, is, though, Smith, like, I mean, not Smith, uh, Black Zeus, like, people were given a leg up without really much knowledge of anything. I'm not disagreeing. I'm not in disagreement of it. Like when you look at the new deal that FDR passed to get people out of the great recession, (laughs) yo, black people were left out of that. And like, like that was the start of the middle Mm. class. Like literally that new deal policy was the Mm. start of the American middle class and black people was left out of it. When you talk about veterans coming out of the Vietnam war and being left out of the GI bill, and black I agree. veterans, like I that, agree that's with the mess. Like, but so, like, when I, you talk about people, generational wealth, black people by and large, like my wife, like I'm not an American descendant of slave, but my wife, you know what I mean? Like, she's entitled to some of that, yo. Like, to be I, like I, completely I, excluded out of that is kind of messed up. I hear what you're saying, but you ever heard that? You know, um, get a man a fish. You know, he'll eat for a day you know, teach them how to fish or eat, you know, for a a lifetime, you know, the whole thing is all I'm hearing is Mm -hmm. give him a fishing pole, you know, that's it. Just give him a fishing pole. That's the answer. And it's just like a fishing pole without the knowledge of how to use it, when to use it, what to use as bait, this, that, that, it's almost useless. That's what I'm saying. It's the fact that it it can't just be a, but um, in that argument, uh, Exactly. All I'm saying is the fact of if they're going to give you um, this land or this credit or whatever the case is, they should also give you the knowledge or the education of how to use it to build generational wealth. That's why I said put that in a rock that forces them, okay, that money's going to stay there. Now when I retire. But why got to be tied it. to the stock market, though? Oh, it doesn't well, have to be subject. tied to the stock market. It just would, has to have an education behind yeah, it. I would put it how, to, something. how to turn that 25000 well, into a million. Well, what else can you... I'm just saying that because that helps you build wealth without you being able to touch it. I don't know, man. I take offense to the idea that stipulations have to be given to reparations when no other demographic of people had those stipulations given to them was, when they were given was, reparations. What was the whole point of the 40 acres and a mule? Smith, like, you were saying something, brother? What was the purpose of it? What was the purpose? Of it? He lagging on oh, the computer. I think he lagging. Yeah. lagging. I'm getting onto the other computer because he said I was like, okay. Um, yeah, no, I was saying you still, you still have to understand that you can't judge how people are going to use that money. And the, no. Yeah. And yeah. The that was the deal, Henry. Because labor that was provided to the American society for so many years, that was the deal that was cut. But the deal never yeah, came to fruition. You know what I mean? So the purpose wasn't for them to help, so to help them get ahead. Deal. The Asians got their deal, but the Black Americans never got their deal. But the you 40 acres I mean? they never the got what was owed to them. They never got what was but the so was the forty acres in the mule to help them get ahead? And everybody or no? else did. You understand? Mm-hmm. No, because you lagging. <laughs> yes, it was to give you. It was that. It was to give you. Well, I'm. Uh, you know, illiterate bastards book club shit. So I'm trying to go into the other one. Smith, I'm about to come so to your house, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be on this panel together bro. but any, yeah was, i'm gonna I say just, this man read just, this book the color of law i don't know my, it is it's, it's it's really good bro and I, I like to be honest i know we don't like to revisit books that we already read individually but like this might be a book selection that um that and many others i see smith with a whole bunch i just don't think that um we should relegate or put stipulations on what reparations are. I don't know. I feel like the the, the original uh, reason that reparations was put in place, of course you get what you're owed, but to also help you get ahead. I don't feel like the, the, like I don't feel like this is what this money is going to be used All for. Right, but when you talk saying. about, like I said, when but, you but talk about getting it, but when you talk about but that's, getting that's, ahead. Wait, no, that's not, the point that I wanted to say because I'm the one that's lagging. So the point that I wanted to say with that, but when you are, and you are saying that you got to do this and nobody else has to go through this, but you're right. They get their money and all right, dealt out their money. How it's doled out. Understand this. When people play the lottery, nobody teaches anybody financial planning when they play the lottery. 
they win hundreds of millions of dollars. And nobody says shit. Yeah. Okay. All right. They I blow agree it, with they, you know what? Yeah, yeah, but they're not. I that's, that's, nobody, that's, hey, if you're gonna, nobody says if you're going to play the lottery, you have to take financial planning lessons before you take the lottery because if you get this money, you have to know what to do with it. That's uh, bullshit. You know what? I agree with you. And here's the thing. And, Here's the thing. You're going to hear, you, you're going to get that. And that's not a problem. I, I'm in the, uh, you give me 25,000. I know what to do with it. But if my next door neighbor blows it on whatever, I don't want to hear nobody crying. Oh, well, it's not his fault. But that's not the part that you, we should be uh, worrying about. It's the not is- the part that we should worry about, but it is the part that you will hear from black advocates but- that it's not enough money, that they didn't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. And the sob story of how they couldn't build generational wealth because X, Y, and Z. So it's I, like I if, get if that, sat- but hold on, but hold on. So if you're satisfied with just getting the check, don't complain when nothing goes beyond that check. And that's and that's a fine, fair point to have. But like I think the point that I think me and Smith is making is, yo, when reparations is old, like there shouldn't be these contingencies to it. Like I hear you. Just, it shouldn't. I agree be. with you with the contingencies. Yeah. I mean, I hear what you're the contingencies. I'm just telling you that after that, that, that reparations, let's say you give a nigga 40 acres of mule today, every single one of them, what they're going to do with it? We don't know. How many, how many of them know how to farm? How many of them know what to do with that land? Well, there's a small percentage of farmers across all demographic of people. No, but the whole thing is how many? Like, Bruh, we thing. don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Like, yo, so, repar- is, I'm just saying, like, that. you don't know. We <laughs> You're doing, you're doing what people do in education, though, Black Zeus. They say <laughs> don't, they don't know. You just making it you can't. Have. I ain't gonna be able to deal with this thing like this. Yo, seriously, oh, yeah. Smith, <laughs> you got to get off that AT and T wireless, man. <laughs> For real, bro. You got so to on, upgrade the hook. Comcast. You still on AOL, bro? My fault, <laughs> man. This thing, this thing is yo. It's so long, man. man yo, it's yo, so Smith, long. go back to your patio. Your reception be on yeah, point on the bro, patio. So why you why you chilling in the in the lot of every den? You in a Smith, cage. It's cold in the patio. <laughs> <laughs> Smith, Cause always... I was having, no, because I was I was having issues. Well, it's whatever issues you had out right. there followed you to the What's library, the next bro. Issue? All right, What's let's the next let's, issue. All right, let's 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 let's, 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 let's try you to quickly get to Let's let's try let's try to quickly transition to the next two articles so we can get into the book. All right, let uh, one of the last two stories. So this is from the Guardian: Plummeting sperm counts, shrinking penises, toxic chemicals threaten humanity. A new book called Countdown by Shauna Swan, an environmental reproductive epi- epidemiologist at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York, finds that sperm counts have dropped almost 60% since 1973. Following the trajectory we are on, Swan research suggests that sperm counts could reach zero by 2045. The chemicals to blame for this crisis are found in everything from plastic containers, food wrapping, to waterproof clothes, fragrances, and clothing products, to soap, shampoos, to electronics, to carpeting. Some of them are called PFAS, are known as forever chemicals because they don't know breakdown in the environment or the human body. In the United States, a scientific study found that twilight exposure widespread in infants and the chemicals were found in urine of babies who came into contact with baby shampoos and lotions and powders. So it goes on and on about um, you know what is causing these these um, um, the quality of sperm to diminish and shrinking shrinking penises. So, uh, I sent you guys the article. You guys can read more in depth later. But what do you guys think about uh, what's happening with our sperm counts and shrinking penis penises? Um, but it's too close to home, fellas. Where you guys I'm, quiet? I'm, uh, no, actually, I'm trying not to make any jokes. I'm I'm about to say, not my sperm to... count is good at first. I. Was... Uh, <laughs> I my, my man Smith talking about I already produced my two kids, so they ain't, I, ain't no Listen, fun. bro, I, I, I made my contribution. You and Kel need to catch up. <laughs> I got my y'all y'all got to hurry up now because you see the sperm count is dropping. I still, bro, I still got 24 more years bro, before, before, before I get down to zero. Hey, listen. 
But um, I don't know, man. I, honestly, you want my genuine opinion? Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, like, at the, at the, like, the way I see it is like, listen, listen. I, the way I see it is that humanity has to come to an end at some point in time. Every other plant, every other... Uh, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So if you I, have such I, a morbid perspective so why do you care so much about this whole covid stuff like you've been very you've been passionate for I'm, the past- I'm more listen i'm more concerned about the covid stuff because the fact of if your dumb ass comes around me with covid i get sick what okay. you, if you if you if you fucking die it don't affect me but if you get yeah. me sick it affects me so whatever you dude. do to yourself is on you what you do to me and mine you know what i mean it, it, that's where i'm concerned that he did I, shoot, shoot I, it I, also. I, what, what you say, Smith? No, I was saying I think it's only becoming an issue because the way that we're um, emascul- emasculating the men in America now it's becoming an issue because we don't have enough men because we're making them all females. We're allowing them to wear dresses and shit. So That's now right. it's becoming an issue with the sperm count because the last few men that are left they're saying that the sperm is not strong enough to be able to procreate. Make real men. Mm. Yeah, to make real men. That's where I'm going with it. Like I, you know, I was thinking I wasn't gonna say it, (laughs) Mm. but Smith got no filter. So thank you, Smith. I'm just saying, like, what at the end of the day, like your sperm count is going low because of plastic. It's uh, like, a, a series of things, you know, plastic. I know some other things, but at the end of the day, a lot of these things have been around. Now, we have made some other man made DTH chemicals and shit like that. Uh huh. Um, but at the end of the day, like civilization has lasted for X amount of years right now, right? With yeah. a lot of these things that we have in place already, the plastics and all these things. And the sperm counts have never been affected unless they had never really been studying it. You know what I mean? I'm still going to attribute it to the fact that our society has become so so we have we have translated it from um the two sex to the 17, 18 sexes right now. So I think that's the point. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think now the sperm count becomes an issue because there is no no male version and female version. There's all of these uh these Why spectral <laughs> I'm trying to be, genders. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I read your document, bro. The wide yes, spectrum of so genders. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. if yeah. I'm asexual, I'm not planning on having any children because I'm asexual. So, I mean, I think that I think that's what it is. But I'm still later with like Black Zeus says, man. I don't give a fuck. My son gonna be able to have kids. His sperm gonna be good. <laughs> like, I, but I they're mean, saying, but they're saying though, like they they've identified these chemicals in the in the urine of babies. Okay, but even if that's the case, <laughs> here's the thing: they're not concerned about each and individual baby. They're concerned about humanity. And the whole thing is that it's the arrogance of humanity. What makes you think you're so goddamn important? Ninety nine percent. You sound of, like my man Edmund Kirsch. You I'm, know, I'm, I'm, being real, I'm being real with it though. I'm you just sounding like Edmund Kirsch. All right, brother, go ahead. Listen, 90, 90, <laughs> over ninety percent of um, the creatures that ever existed are ex- are are, are, are irrelevant. Oh, All yeah, right. Extent, so, what yeah. makes you think you are so superior that it doesn't apply to you too? Okay. Dinosaurs mm-hmm. are gone. The planet's still here. Yeah. All right. You know, Henry, uh, what you got, man? I mean, I'm kind of with Schubert on this. I was the first thing you said, 2045. I'm like, all right, that's 24 years from now. I'm going to be 60. And I think I'll be all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I'm good. I mean, if I have a kid, let me think. I care about his sperm count. I don't know, man. I don't even feel like this is real. <laughs> yeah, that's how I really feel. Like I feel like I feel like no, the world it's, is still it's real. It's, it's real. real. We, yeah, we got these man-made chemicals that we've been making and shit. And you know, we've been allowing factories to get these I right mean, off the big industry. I just mean, I just mean, and the runoff is real, so it's real. No, but when I'm saying real. I just mean to me the my point, lifetime. Hmm. I just mean to the point of like. It's not going to end the human race. Like, if it really becomes an issue, then I think 
people would be smart enough to stop using the chemicals and man-made plastics. No, I don't think it would end the human race because you also still have countries that only allow you to have one kid. So yeah, you just let them have more kids than one, right? But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, China, China, a couple of years ago, <laughs> um, repealed their one-child um, policy and stuff like that, which they're oh, seeing yeah. the ramifications of that. Yeah, I don't know. They're just, population. you know, yeah. They're, 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 you're right. Well, like, that's for I, economic I, reasons. That's not for you know. Of course, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Extinct. Yeah, that There's was economic. That. Yeah. That's economics. It's not a matter of them going extinct. Yeah, going extinct and keep the civilization moving. Yeah. yeah. Like what they're talking about is the the um um humankind going extinct. Yeah. And, and I don't, like, so what? And, and guess what? I don't think that happens because you know, man want to play God all the time. So all we listen, you're saying that the sperm is getting polluted, but all that sperm that's already frozen can still be used. Good point. I'm just saying, there's a whole bunch good. of frozen sperm still yeah. out there. Like, good, good point. And yeah, if you think that this is going to happen in 2045, we free sperm now, so that way, later on down the road, see how that works. All right, all right but let me ask a question though, right? So let's say those the sperms are that are frozen only are from a select few of men. So now you're going to have a population of people who are being produced from this select few of sperms who are closely genetically tied. Don't you don't we think we're gonna have a problem there? Where it's just like you might have Well if they come through and say uh, well, not- if they say it's ending, okay, we're really in danger, then every male in the world gives one specimen. There we go. No, no, no but like even, every you man even, uh, dude, you don't need that many. You, listen, you gotta remember the fact of our entire numer- numerical system is based on ten digits and the combination mm-hmm. of 10 digits have created infinite numbers infinite numbers off of 10 digits from zero to nine mm-hmm. is what we create how many you know combinations of numbers so think about that do you really need every dude on the planet or do you just need the top you know the strongest of the the the, the, the survival of the fittest the strongest and the best well, but that's what that's what Cash is saying though. Also, that the genetic code would be the same. So basically, you everybody be fucking sleeping with their fucking. <laughs> the friends. genetic code is already <laughs> yes, the same. Exactly. The genetic code is already the same. Every time yeah. you go to do one of those uh, ancestry dot coms, and they tell you, "Yeah, you're nope, twenty part not doing it. Congo and fifteen part, you know, European and twelve parts this, that, and the other." What does that tell you? I tell you what, they they start giving them reparations out. Everybody gonna be doing ancestry. Hey, hey, I'm 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 seven percent black. Can I can I get my seven percent at twenty five thousand? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're pressed for time, so we're not gonna get into the last bit of story. So let's uh transition into the book. Um this book go around is selected by Black Zeus, aka Ben Carson himself. Um <laughs> 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 the, you know what? I hate the whole Ben. Ben Carson is a not Ben Carson. Let, let's just call you Sambo, aka Black Zeus Sambo. I, I still respect Ben Carson. I don't care what anybody said. Um, so the this book go around is the origin by Dan Brown. So do you want to get into the synopsis of the book, or just go ahead and just? Um, all right, I'll give you the quick synopsis of the book. I'm pretty sure most of us like the like some of y'all that tried to call me out. Um, are familiar with the movie of Da Vinci Code. Or I was not Kingdom. until Smith and my wife brought it to my attention. <laughs> All right. So the whole thing is, um, it is um, Origin is part of a five-part series of a professor, um, Langdon, from Harvard University, who is a um, who specializes in um, ancient history. Um, the whole thing is, most people are familiar with the Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons from the film, which, by the way, the films don't do the books any freaking justice. Um, And the whole thing is the five-part series, which are Angels and Demons, uh, Da Vinci Code, uh, Lost Symbols, Inferno, and Origin are all separate stories. You don't need one to understand the other. You know, there's, there's really hardly any reference except for Da Vinci Code has a little bit of reference from Angels and Demons. But other than that, each book is its own story on it, on, onto its own, and they stand alone. Origin is actually the fifth and the final in the five-part series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it incorporates 
um, like most of the series, secret societies, religious doctrine, um, political, um, um, political, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, controversy, conspiracy. It is a very, um, all of Dan Brown books are very well written because he weaves facts of history and places and information mm-hmm. that are very relevant and contemporary with um, fiction to the point where it's hard to tell where, you know, the facts end and the fiction begins, you know. Um, honestly, I myself, the reason I've gotten interested in his writing is because after uh, reading Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons, I still have to read the other two books. Um, he, I, I am very, very well versed in a lot of um, history of the church, of ancient histories, of ancient societies, this, that, and the other, as well as secret societies. So I find it I'm intrigued myself because the fact of, like I said, he weaves facts and fiction so well together. You don't know where one begins and the other ends, but it's always a great and well-written story. That wasn't a synopsis. That was a goddamn essay, Shoe. Goddamn, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Smith, where you at, bro? My man, gone again. Anyway. Yeah, um, you froze, stay frozen. Listen, nah, but AT&T I agree though. Like once I got into the book, I I got a sense that this was a standalone book, and um, it had no, it made no reference to like pieces of prior installments by Mister Dan Brown himself. So um, yeah. So let's get into it. Um, let's start with my bad, my boy. I have to go downstairs for a second. Yeah, no problem. No, no problem, bro. Uh, so we're gonna start off with uh Black Zeus questions. Um. Do you have any particular one you want to hit first since you're, you know, you're going to be the first one pressed for time? Uh, no, I'm good. Nah. Uh, let's start with the first one. Ed has made it his life ambition to replace religious belief with scientific reasoning. For centuries, religion has tried to silence, silence science and philosophy. Religion and science oppose each other greatly and both have been used for good and evil. Can this dichotomy coexist peacefully? That was actually one of the questions I was going to submit, but I was like, oh, you did it. <laughs> um, you want to start first? Or, uh, you know what was interesting? I want to hear um, Kale like first. I want to hear Kale oh, first. Okay. Oh, no, I want Pradley to go first. This dude will never go first. All right, Pradley, go ahead. And the question is basically, can science and religion coexist, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Are we keeping this rooted in the book or just general? Well, I think you could do a combination of both. All right, cool. Um, Like in your synopsis, as you was running down um, Mr. Dan Brown's writing of previous installments and how he inserted uh, historical facts. And in this, um, the first 26 chapters that we were um, um, relegated to reading, he mentioned how um, in Baghdad was once the epicenter of like, scientific studies in the middle east and like over the course of a night religion you know philosophy or theology just took over and just wiped out that that entire advancements of science and now that's that that country is just you know hasn't seen much advancement um that was interesting i had to look it up because i didn't i like i said i had no um, prior knowledge of Mr. Dan Brown writing in regards to like how much historical facts he put into it. So I had to look it up and it was facts and it was just like, wow. Um, and just for my own personal um, recollection. Mathematics. That's how bad it was. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I, I, I seem to like when I see people, scientists on television, like um, uh, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson and, and, and uh, what's that Asian guy's name? Jeez, he's he's a um, uh, astrologist. They're all astrologists. You mean uh, uh, um, not astrologists? Astrophysics. Astrophysics. Thank you. Uh, um, Steve Hawkins? No, not Steve no, 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 no. Asian. Asian. I, it'll uh, come to me at some point. But anyway, like when I was doing my research in regards to like mo- mo- some of the most profound thinkers of the 21st century, not like a great deal of span. I see that a lot of them are devoid of religion. Um, they don't really have a lot of religion rooted into their thoughts process. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't, it, it doesn't come across that people who are um, thinkers in the science realm 
seem to entertain the idea of theology. Um, I, it, it doesn't seem like it could coexist mm-hmm. um, in many regards. Like you look at the like the the, the school system in the South. Um, I know a lot of like Joanna. She, you know, with her occupation, she was telling me how um, school systems in the South they don't like to teach evolution. <laughs> you know, so um, there is this sort Challenges of like their belief. Yeah, so it's like yeah, there is, there is this resistance um, with science with a lot of religious folks, and there is this sort of shunning of religion with a lot of science folks. Yeah. Agreed. They um so they don't want I don't I don't think it necessarily will exist um unless they're on that. Yo, this nigga yeah. is bugging this week. You went from lagging to like being in the surround sound. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I'm in surround sound, right? You like that, right? I hooked you up. But one for two things. One, I gave you all that site to Langdon's world, right? Um Langdon's world gives you um, images for what we're reading. Mm-hmm. So as we're reading through the chapters, it gives you, you know, um, the images from the Guggenheim um, and from the different places that he was running around in. So when you all get a second, put that, look at that. But the science and the, and the God, the science and religion, they're not one and the same. And you don't you don't see that in the in the past because they wasn't dealing with religion. They was dealing with gods. You know, they had a god for everything. Sun god, earth god, moon god, they had a god for everything. Um and as you know they evolved, they started taking out some of these gods when they started realizing that, oh, this is only happening because of the tide. So um the, the you know, because of the moon's gravitational pull, that's why the water's coming up like this. So once they started learning more about science, you know, you still got those who believe in the God and you got those who believe in the science. You got those who say, I'm not gonna take the COVID vaccine because my God is gonna take care of me. And then you have the scientists say, Yes, you gotta take care of you. That's why he told us to create this vaccine. The dichotomy is never going to be one in the, you know, mm-hmm. one in the same. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think they'll ever necessarily coexist. Um, I think they'll always be fighting each other, you know. Um, I think there are things that are still hidden from people just because they don't think um, people are ready to understand, have an understanding, you know, or even have a conversation about it. And it's easy to trap people in religion because you can separate the people when you trap them in religion, you know. Yeah, I, I think they'll be able to coexist as long as they don't have to work collaboratively with one another. Like, it just seems but like science. How about the same? How are they coexisting? Well, I mean, what's saying that they have to work along with one another to, to survive? Think about, the, think about what Proudly just said about the school systems, where, you mm-hmm. know, like there's a literal um, quote unquote debate down in the South that they're talking about evolution versus what they call uh, intelligent design. Which is basically a a, a, a a a nice way of saying you know cr- uh, creation or yeah, but, you know religious like, belief of how you know things yeah. were were, were um, started versus evolution that actually has science evidence proof you yeah, know but, behind it. You have the science that still talk about the Big Bang and this is how we were created, and then you have yeah, the religious that say it's the guy and this is how we were created, and they have never seen that eye to eye. But you're not really getting religion in schools to begin with, just because it's not I don't know, it's PC to talk about it. I mean, I think it becomes an issue where it's okay now. I'm going to college, and certain colleges aren't offering religious classes or aren't offering certain science classes. So, I mean, you still get that same opportunity. It's religion is never spoken about in the school. I mean, I just feel like I think it depends on the school system which you're talking about. Well, no, it's it's not supposed to be. Yeah, because some people are based on religion. You got Catholic schools that that's the basis. Yeah, I just mean, I just mean public. I just mean public schools. Okay, but again, public schools. But what about when we say "quote unquote" winter break or spring break? Mm. it, It just happens to coincide with Christmas and Easter. Now you can argue and say like, well. Winter break is always around the same time, but East, but spring break is not always around the same time because it's mm-hmm. always wherever the weekend of Easter is. Because mm-hmm. the whole thing is Easter's never on the same Sunday. Easter mm-hmm. actually falls in 
um, after, you know, it's always after the Verner Equinox. It's the, after the very first full, it's the first Sunday that falls after the first full moon after the Verner Equinox. Yeah, but didn't, didn't Easter with the homeboy rolls on the dead on like the seventh day or something like that? Because. Well, you said so then, oh, hold on. He, he he rose after the third day. So yeah, then, hold oh, no, on, wait, wait. But then, I'm trying to make sure you have no, 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 let, let him say. No, let him I'm say saying it. this to say, what does that have to do with the fact that we get the whole week off? Like, I don't the whole really thing feel is like the that's week, the week is given to you in correlation in to religious of, holiday. Yeah, it's the observance Without, they of they the religious, say religious say holiday. It. Mm-hmm. They can't yeah. say it directly. So they call it spring break. Spring break. Exactly. They can't okay. call it directly, so they call it okay. winter break. Yeah, but so that's the same thing as far as thing. But it's the same the education thing. As, system. But it's the same thing as far as not being able to speak about it in public schools. Like that's the whole and I get what you're saying, but then what's the scientific holidays that we would have off? No, that's we like don't conflicting. Have any scientific holidays. What I'm saying is the fact of how it affects our society. So um, the whole thing is, is that we have this this contradiction where we say separate church and state, but yet it doesn't really happen. It yeah. doesn't really happen. It doesn't happen. It's on our money for Pete's sake. In God we trust. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I just don't understand how one's really affecting the other. Like, well, here's how it affects, uh, yeah, how, how, how it affects the other. Affecting the so, religion? So like scientifically how, uh, speaking, scientifically speaking, we know the fact of, you know, a person doesn't receive, you know, we don't know exactly when a person has consciousness, all right? We don't know exactly when a person has consciousness, but yet every single time you got all these fucking religious fanatics standing outside the abortion clinic, you know, with their signs and this, that, and the other about how babies' lives matter, but yet when they see a black person get killed in the street, you don't see not one of those motherfuckers around. Yeah, you mm-hmm. see different people standing around for Black Lives Matter. So I'm just saying the fact that that is what religion does. Religion is it, religion but is, is that, but denies is, science. But is abortion denies science? Oh, That's what is, I'm saying. But is abortion? <laughs> but are abortions just tied to religion? That's not people. So everybody who goes out there and is against abortions is the because of religious reasons. Against- the biggest are fanatics religious, against yeah. uh, our religious against people. Yeah, religion. but you I mean, not pro white people. people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, but I'm not the saying all, I'm the just pro saying white people are generally also I religious. It's, I mean, it's, what I'm, I'm saying, saying that all religious, but right, right, when, right, when I'm when I'm saying does one affect the, the other? Of, all right, we know the science. Yes. We, know the, we know the science of antiviral medicines like vaccines, but yet people can say, "Oh, I can't take the vaccine. My religion." Says that I can't. Well, exempt you. So, yeah. so here's my thing. They'll be yeah. exempt. Hold on, hold on. They'll be exempt yeah. from taking vaccines, and then those mm-hmm. will be the um, kids and the people that will bring mumps, measles, measles, uh, scarlet yeah. flu back yeah. into the schools systems that affect all of us because they want to deny the science. And if you bring anything, if you bring anything into the church that goes against God, and you can scientifically prove it, prove it. That will never that that dichotomy will never work. That shit will never yeah, work. I mean, because it's um, based off of faith. It's based off of belief system. Just, and if you bring anything um, that will challenge that belief system, it will make everything fall. So the religious that that religious uh, that corporate that corporate religion that that shit is like a corporation. That's what it is. This shit they're into making money. And right now, I don't know if you all. Are, Care to know about this, but they're struggling right now because people weren't going out to the yeah. churches and donations. Yeah. You know, Not yeah. if, on Sunday, so they wanted the Pope to come out and you know, come on, people. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, if I'm not religious, I don't need the church, do I? I don't need the church because my religion is going to take care of me. I can have a church from here. Yeah, you know what I mean? think so, if, if, if I don't think that shit works hand in hand, bro. You know if, what I mean? No, not hand to hand, but they can both coexist. Like you can have both of them can have their own opinions and be fine. If the Republicans, oh yeah, both of them can exist. Yeah. It's not so they, that they, they can't exist. It's can they exist them, peacefully? The whole yeah, thing is, is that there is a, see. Here's the thing. Science does not try to cross the line into religion. Religion always tries to cross the line into science. All right. Mm-hmm. No, science has never said, listen, you can't believe in whatever, you know, sky daddy you want. It's just mm-hmm. the fact of when we say, okay, yeah, listen, yeah. we want 
we want our kids to be vaccinated so that way, you know, measles, <laughs> well, mumps, well. whatever, doesn't move around. People say, well, my religious belief says this, that, and the other. And somehow we say that's a trump card. Yeah, that but you, you know what, though? that card but, over the fact. Over but, the not, fact. but not everybody is turning down vaccines because of religion. Bradley, are you not taking the COVID vaccine because of your okay, religion? We're not, no, not, no, we're not talking about minority people. We're exactly. talking about specifically we're not just one about the group of people. Yeah, we're not just talking about, about the COVID vaccine You're turning, you're turning it because, because of your religion. religion. So you're, you're saying, turning no, the you argument you against you what? Get, what? Listen, take out, Henry. A Jehovah's Witness won't get the blood transfusion even though it supposes it can save their life. No, I understand that. Because it's against the religion. But like, I had a student, I told you, I had a student, her mother, um, Jehovah Witness, a devout, supposedly, um, and Jehovah Witness, they're not supposed to do anything to their body. So the yeah. lady, she to do something to her body because she thought she was too heavy, right? Um, and what happened was when it, she was, something happened, there's some complications, and she needed the oxygen or something else in the transfusion. They wouldn't allow her to get it because she said at that point, her religion trumped what they were trying to do to save her life. So I went against my religion to get my body in order, but then to save my life, I say, no, my, it's a religious thing. You know what I mean? And, and again, so that, that, young lady, that young lady lost her mother in eighth grade. You know so what I mean? Still, but then, that's, but then that's, the, that's the decision that they're making, whether it's religious beliefs or not. And Schubert, to your thing, to your... That's what we're saying. We can do it based but, off of religious, though. Yeah, but to your point... It's not based off of science. science. But to your yeah, point, I think that the science can save your life, Henry, and you're like, no, my religion says I can't do that. Then you got to like respect that. Myself. But at the but at the end of the day, and you hear that right? But at the end of the day, okay, I'm gonna take the vaccine that's going to protect me from the measles, where the next person may not, or the shots, whatever that where they may or may not. And I mean, I don't know what. But that's not. Not, and that's not, not based off the religion. Okay, let's go up to... Um, no, but what I'm saying is... Let's go up to Jersey. 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 They decided they didn't want to take the vaccine, right? And they decided to do her immunity in their community. And now there's no COVID in their community. These are the um, Amish. The Amish. I just... Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. It's not... I'm listening to you, bro. No, but you got to all, all this when yeah, you have it. But, but I'm agreeing. That's why I'm saying it can coexist. So you have the I, well, people who are saying it's against my religion. Not peacefully, religion. though. Not peacefully. Can it coexist peacefully? I think to be, but uh, like to bring it to the book, because when Edmund, Edmund Kirsch was pre- doing his presentation at the museum, he was, what he was illustrating was the fact that religion stunts evolution. Religion, like people who are religious, like when you talk about stem cell research, a lot of times stem cell research is using fetus, fetus cells. Mm -hmm. Very religious people are very against that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have this advancements of medicine and technology or in the health sector uh, without the study of fetus cells. So if you were to have left that up to religious people, we wouldn't be as far as advanced as we are today if it wasn't for the scientific people in our society. There's no said, denying it. And, and there's no denying that. And even if to say that the religious people are wrong, it's not like they're stopping the scientific research from happening. They are. They some of them are actually trying they to are. stop no, but a trying lot of, and no. doing it trying and doing it is two different things. Do you know like, how close we were to having, you know, imagine if if something had happened to Trump and Pence had become the president, do you know how world changing that would have been? Like, do y'all feel like if if there was no religion and everybody was science, okay, we were all just gonna believe in the, the scientific version, we have cures to cancer, cures to AIDS. Like, is religion the thing that's stopping this these advancements from happening? That's what Edmund Kirsch is saying, bro. In the yeah. book, he's saying that. The advancement of human beings, because he was telling like uh, stories of how all these religious cultures, you know, how barbaric they are and how, you know, uh, uh, childish in, 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 in their ways of thinking. And I think yeah. one of the illustrations, yes. And then like one of the illustrations he last showed was a young girl in a microscopic lens or something like that, looking at cells or something. And he, basically the premise of that illustration was to say like, look, we've made such advancements 
in the past few decades, and we could only proceed to go forward if we devoid ourselves of all of these religions. I don't understand. I mean, maybe as a society as a whole, okay, I get that concept if every single person's on the same page. Yeah. But I don't feel like... Um, I got one example. That's, Never the thing, like- Henry, that's it. That's the thing, though, Henry. If every single person's on the same page and religion takes people off of the same page. Well, yep, that's bingo. Right yep, but that you- right there. That is exactly what no, it is no, right no, there. No, I understand that. I understand yeah. that, but I don't. I feel like there's enough people. Even though our books say the same thing. Yeah. I just have to put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> like like enough- you have so many different denomination of one particular religion, it makes no sense. Hmm. Yeah. Um. No. Well, well, think about it this uh, way, right? If you you ever watch like futuristic dystopian movies, where it's just like you talk about like you know when you really break like, like look into those. Listen, man. Yeah, when you look into like those type of movies, you notice a common thing that a lot of religion is not really talked about in those movies. Yeah. They they pray, they pray. But religion is not talked about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't <laughs> I mean, you get people protesting, but I don't understand how this is stopping modern science from occurring. It's not just stopping modern science, it's the fact of when so many people stay in a childlike state of mind, you know, even into their adulthood of like, it's okay. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to get a real answer. I'm just going to let my imaginary space daddy handle it. <laughs> yeah. it, it means the fact daddy, of, that means that your culture is not advancing. Yo, Black Zeus, can we... <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, like, it's daddy, I'm, just, <laughs> I's I'm just saying, like, it, it means that yeah, your culture is not advancing. But you so, have a lot of religious hold on, hold on, hold on. don't just... Perspective, <laughs> when we spoke about Baghdad, right? Baghdad was an epicenter of 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 forward thinking, and then mm-hmm. religion came in. Um, Islam came in and said, "No, this is you know this is um, satanic. This is devil worship. Mathematics, algebra, geometry. These were things that we you know that were advancing. Had they not gotten away of that, right? Where now, where these people were some of the smartest people on the planet. Now you you know you go to Baghdad and the the reading level." The basic reading level they're is illiterate, like, bro. It's like you know, the illiteracy is like crazy. Yeah, they're illiterate. It's like yeah. they've been they've been reduced to the childhood thinking again. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Where they were so far in advance. Yeah. Imagine if brown people had maintained that um that level of thinking. Where so would I, we be today? Where so would we, there, there wouldn't even be white supremacy. So so yeah. sci- so Scientolo- mm. so Scientologists. Uh, proven to be like the smartest people, like one of the, some of the top smart smartest people. What up, Scientologists? No, no, that's a that's a if the science and the church work together, the amount of money that they both bring in, you don't think that we would excel? Like as a human yeah, race, but if they really work together. Think about this. Yeah, think about this thing. Because they say they need more money for cancer research and all these things. They don't need more money. The money's there. You know what I mean? But remember that there's no money in cures of anything. So we still got to keep this. And then we got to have the church over here to pray over these people that don't want to take the medicine. See, so you hitting it on the head, though. Give these people the medicine because, you know, we still want to keep, we don't have too many people. It's all It's all a big thing, man. It's all a but Smith, they, they that thinking, pushing buttons, man. See, that thinking makes sense to me because the whole idea and the whole, even the whole base of this conversation is just like, well, the religious people are stupid and the people who believe in science are the smart ones. No, 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 no. no. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it no. twisted. It's For not religion. a matter of the people who are religious are stupid. It's the fact of the people who are highly religious have not been developed to their full capacity. That's what it is. It's like staying, you're going to stay in elementary school all of your life. Bro, it sounds like you're calling them stupid. It's not <laughs> stupid. There's a difference. I See, think with thing. religion. Hold, with hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let, yeah. me, let me articulate my point. All right. The whole thing is this is between stupid and being held back. Stupid means that you don't have the capability. All right. That would be stupid. 
The whole thing is the religion grabs you when you're very, very, very young and does not let go of you. Mm -hmm. Right. It holds on to your mind and it keeps you dependent where you're constantly coming in week in, week out. You're having your community reinforce it. You're having um, um, religious um, ceremonies, uh, holidays and everything else reinforce it to keep you in this one state of mind. The whole thing is if you actually were outside that state of mind um, and you were pushed forward, you would advance your mind a lot better. All right. But the whole thing is. So to put into perspective, ask any, just about any religious person, all right? Ask them like, okay, what's, tell me about your religion. You believe in a white man that came from, you know, um, Bethlehem, where all people are brown, and um, died for you, even though you didn't exist, and this, that, and the other, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so be it. So you super- believe, hold on, hold on, let me finish my point. That same person, you say to them, well... I believe in Zeus, a god that oversaw all the other gods, and this, that, and the other. And they will look at you like a fool. Okay, so what's the them, scientific? Let me finish my point. My, let me finish my point. If you said to them, um, um, if you said to them, I believe in um, Brahma, who you know um, has who created other gods from his mind. I believe in um, Buddha, who um, went, um, who achieved. At, well, I can't really say Buddha because Buddha's more, I got you, Shub. I get the point you're saying. They're going to feel like their God makes sense and the other ones don't. Exactly. Right? And the whole so, thing is they have the same amount of evidence and proof that they have for their God as anybody else. So, Shub, what's the scientific takes, version of how science, man started? Okay, the scientific version of how man started, well, that's a long-ass fucking story. You know, that's a long-ass fucking story. Um, whoo. At what point do you want to talk about what man started? Okay, the first, part, like the first first man, yeah, the first man, first person ever started. Did we no one knows. From... There was no first person. There was no first person. Like yeah, in the sciences, they don't believe it yet. Yeah, there's, there's not there's a was, one. Yeah. So we were just okay. So first people, we evolved. Yeah. So it's kind of like saying so we started point, off as like a you, horse. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's, or it's eight. Like, no, here's the thing. Science works like this. It's like making a cake. When you put all the ingredients into the oven and it's batter, right? At what point exactly did it go from becoming batter to being a cake? You can't pinpoint exact moment saying, oh, it's no longer batter. It's cake now. All right. So according it's, to it's, science, it's like when... the end res- it's like the end um it's like the end result. And it's not according to science, it's according to facts. So what so according to the facts, how did we start? We were we just here. <laughs> like, no. Well, that's what the scientists are constantly challenging. And I think that that's no, the one thing. We well, well, let, well let, yeah, me, like, let me just say one thing. It's just like the thing is with the science versus the religion. What I what I tend to notice is religion and like Black Zoo says, religion seems to say, you know what? It's just the gods and leave it at that. Whatever the your religious says, sect, I don't know. The science... At not least only the, the science is being honest. No, not yeah. only will the science yeah. say I don't know, but they will also explore as to what could be the cause to our very existence or the cause of many other things. And, and they based will, on evidence that they can prove. And based on evidence they can prove. So therefore, there's this evolution, whether it's not just the evolution of human being, is like like in a sense of like our existence, but there's this evolution of thinking. That's what Edmund Kirsch is saying. It's just like when you talk about religion, there's this there's this ceiling level that tends to happen with religious people where you just stop trying to forwardly progress. You stay in elementary state. You stay yeah, in you, elementary you, you for, state of mind. You, 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 you cease to forwardly progress to think and you just leave it up to, but well, the, that's the gods. Hence why he was breaking down the Greek, Greek mythology. He was saying like, yo, the way Greek mythology became mythology is because as science evolved, we basically relegated all of these gods as to mythology because the Thank scientists you. were able to prove that this is false. So the scientists proved that Zeus was actually a god. No, what the science, science was that, able to that prove that, that there wasn't that, that many lightning. gods. Yeah. No, science proved the fact that when people said that thunder and lightning came from the gods, and then science found out, no, thunder and lightning comes from um, from from um ions that connect with the ground and and, and um 
Well, that's that's a whole. I'm going to go into too much of a lesson here. But yeah, I yeah. think I, is, I you know what though, Shu? But I think along that line of thinking, if scientists can prove, okay, this is how we started, then I mean, at that point, then they'll be able to coexist peacefully. And I, you know what? To be honest, I think nah, they won't, bro. Because they won't. Pe- won't. Yeah, they, they won't. won't. Okay. You're gonna have people who are gonna resist it, bro. They the resist it now. At that point, yeah, the church will be no good at that point. I just yeah. don't. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm not believe it. I'm on the church's side with this one. Just not not on their side, but just I'm not on either side because it's like, okay, you want me to believe in your thinking and you can't prove it, and you want me to believe in your God and you can't prove it. So I'm not, I'm not, hold up, what cannot be what what cannot be proven in science? How we started. Where did the where did what do we start as? Oh, we're still At figuring point, it out. Talk about the Big Bang that we still have. Big we big still have so it was just a Big the, Bang, and then we the, all were just that's here. That's the start of it. The whole and thing. Then evolution. Hold on. The, the, and there's proof at least of here's that. The here's the thing. Here's the thing. Science Bullshit. has said science has been has tracked it back as far as it can to the point of the Big Bang from one singularity. The whole thing is there's yeah. evidence of that still today of how you know um, there is radiation. <laughs> From that but original it, Big Bang. Uh, so the whole it, thing is that can be actually proved. You can actually get an education in that. So it's and no longer. It and, there's a part of that. Hold on. Now, hold, so it's no the longer difference. called the here's, Big Bang Theory. So it's here's not the, a theory anymore. It's, a, it's the Big Bang fact. It's not the Big Bang right. Theory anymore. No, no, the theory is not the fact. Thing. Here's the thing. You are thinking yeah, theory in a yeah. layman term. You're thinking theory in a layman term. In scientific terms, a theory is anything that has is a basis of a, a load of information that can lead to one thought, all right, or one one answer, this, that, and the other. It is the strongest but is it a possible. Fact? It is the strongest possible. But they haven't, they haven't proven that, though. We can't speak so it's not a fact. Can't, we can't <laughs> prove it. The same way that they say that man generated from Unk Monkey, which yeah. you Here's know, the thing. I got Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's that's the right thing. here, right? Here's that's what. Here's the thing. You're you're basically saying that if you walked into your house and you found blood, you found a knife, you found evidence of of a struggle, you found, you know, um, hair samples, sperm samples, this, that, and the other, you'd be like, nope, nothing happened here because you can't, without a doubt, prove that this is this is the end. No matter how much information you have there, you're going to turn a blind eye to that. Well, in theory, saying. in theory, somebody might have died. In theory, somebody might have died. In, in theory, theory, there might have been a, a there might have been a struggle. In theory, there, there might have been, been, been an all that evidence. Yeah, you got to prove it. Okay, so like how right. is how is the theory, the Big Bang theory any different from the theory that we all came from Adam and Eve? Because here's the difference. Show me the evidence of Adam and Eve. And so once the once it becomes a fact and the big no, thing no, no. is no longer the evidence. Here's the thing. That's like we're saying, the evidence of Lucy. We're we're the evidence. evidence. We're the uh, evidence. That was a good we're movie. Not. <laughs> we're, no, we're not. <laughs> How are we not the evidence? According to that theory, we are. People okay, are. Okay, so you're telling me two white people. <laughs> Two white people got together, and because of white people, we have black people, we Asian people, All right, uh, let's ju- Indian let's people. Get... Does that really make sense? That uh, yeah, Harry, well, you Harry, know what? Harry, hold, hold on, on. hold on. Man. Does that make when sense? I, I have nothing to back you with that. I'm oh. only on black blue side with that. <laughs> well, gotta, there's yeah. a lot of issues with yeah. the Old Testaments so, to begin with. A lot of the stories in the Old Testament. We're not, not going to go down this route. We're not going to go down this route because I, I listen. This is I've I've read too much. Right. And I, I know too much about these things that I'm just like I'm not going to argue with you because it's not. But, but, sure, but I mean, but, 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 but just from the simple logic that scientists. Uh, Work in facts. The fact that a Big Bang theory is right, not a fact means. All right, can I say something real quick? Like, yo, you're I not think, right or you're not wrong. Bo- I right, for the premise of this book, uh, Edmund Kirsch is a futurist, so he's not really caring about Big Bang theories and how our existence is here. Let's right. let's leave that off the table. Edmund because- Kirsch is Steve Jobs, exactly. And Elon Musk together. Yeah. So for That's the sake. Of- it is. So for for the sake of this book, Edmund Kirsch is a futurist. He's a technocrat. So he looks at the advancement of human beings, and he sees religion as being the impediment of the advancement of human well, beings. From, from that standpoint, okay, that makes sense because I can see how. Hold on, let me. I can see because how... I think it's going to be very hard to prove from a scientific and a religion perspective. 
our creation. Let's just think about the issues that religion and science seem to have with one another moving forward. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, for the yes. for the sake of I I will agree. For the sake of advancing people techno technologically. Yeah. Then yes, I can see how how religion can be in the way. Yeah. As far as if you need everybody to be on the same page. But if not, if it's just like, okay, you know what? Nah, him, we got problems. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next question. Next question. Let's move on to your question, Pratt. Okay. Okay. Um, (laughs) My bad. My bad. I got too far away. I got too far away from the Wi Fi, man. I know you. You think? I love, I love, I'm starting to like Edmund Kirsch, and it bothered me that he got assassinated. But he said something that was very profound. Edmund believed that monogamy is a front to evolution. Do you believe this to be true? Monogamy is an affront to evolution. Yes. Monogamy. So at first, I was... Now, he didn't go into much great detail surrounding that thought process because Edmund Kirsch, he's like a playboy, so to speak. Like, he doesn't believe in marriage or the structure of marriage. He's like... I'm out here just smashing hoes left and right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just slinging it. And he <laughs> says something where he's like, yo, monogamy is a front to evolution. And they left it at that. So I can, I can see his viewpoint if, if it's coming from this so black, Yeah, explain, explain what you think what he meant by that, Black Goose. So looking at who he is and seeing how um, and looking at the history of monogamy and relationships, this and the other. No, one is that monogamy is not something that we naturally do. It is a it is a conditioned um, behavior. We we teach it to our our, our kids and in our, in our culture throughout. So it's not something we just naturally do without being told. It is something that we have um, predicated over time. Now um, that being said. Um, if we actually were, if, and mind you, this is also if I'm being scientific about it. If we wanted the best of uh, mankind, we would approach it the same way people breed dogs, where it's like the biggest, the strongest, this, that, and the other, so that you can evolve the strongest, the smartest kids, this, that, and the other. But being the fact of um, we basically say, oh, no, you got to find someone you fall in love with and this, that, and the other and be with them for the rest of your life. It doesn't, you know, and that can slow down the development of um, of the human race because the whole fact that you may not fall in love with someone who is intellectually your equal or physically your equal or this, that, and the other to uh, move on, um, to move some, uh, move, um, to move the uh, 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 mankind or humankind forward, you know, just to give you an idea of that, if you look at the Manning brothers, uh, um, um, Eli Manning uh-huh. and, and, and um, Peyton Manning, the fact that you got to say there's something there, not just, you know, that they went to school and played football, but there's some sort of genetic aspect that you're telling me a father and mother produced two NFL champion, you know, quarterbacks. All right. That's not just, oh, they went to the right school or they had the right, you know, edu- uh, this, that, and the other. You still have to have the physical capability. You still have to have the, the eyesight. You still have to have the um, spatial awareness to land that ball exactly in the right spot at the right time in order to produce that type of thoroughbred. So the whole thing, I, I kind of see where he's coming from with that. I, I agree with that, though, Black Goose. Because you could, you could train for all that shit, bro. Bullshit. I'm a trainer. Listen, you can't people, train for that. No, bullshit. I'm a trainer. There's only I mean, there's, no, there's no, I hate the part that there's a genetic code, but like, okay, so most most guys that I know that um are in the NBA, their sons are in the NBA are going to the NBA. Most football players that I know that is in the NFL, their sons are going to the NFL or in the NFL. They have the most genetics. Most players, you know what I mean? It's it's like that. But, but, they have the but genetics. Okay. is it is it is it the genetics of my father or is it the genetics and the training? You know what I mean? Because if the I don't, training, most of us, listen, most of us do what our parents do I or what you. our forefathers do, right? I, so I if, if, if like Mama Sita, I'm talking about Kobe's uh, daughter, she started getting good. Was it genetics? Because the other two daughters ain't had that. 
she, she also wanted to play that, but she also wanted to play. Like mm. she had the love that her father had. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure if it's just strictly genetics. I, that's all I'm saying. I don't know if it's I'm not saying it's, no, 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 no. You're not hearing me. I'm not saying strictly genetics. I'm saying the fact that if you are if you are more genetically prone for a thing and someone okay. cultivates okay. it, then yeah. you know. Okay. Because at the end of the day, a carrot is still going to be a carrot, and an apple is going to be an apple, no matter how much you try to make it something different. Yeah, that's not, really, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the fact of if you have the genetics. So, for instance, is the fact of um, so you who, how many football players are you seeing that are like 140 pounds and slim <laughs> and just and no, you don't see that. Those football players are genetically built to be football players. They have a type two muscle fiber that makes them more explosive, makes them more. Um, uh, makes them more powerful versus a marathon runner who has more type one muscle fiber that makes them better for endurance. Mm-hmm. All right. They, they're better for endurance. So the whole thing is like, there's a genetic aspect that has to be cultivated, but it has to be there. The but I can, make that, be- I can make that marathon runner a football player also though. No, you can't. I can. No, you can't. Now unless all yeah, not, I, now unless all, I, I, all them football players are gonna be like hundred and twenty pounds. And nah, they're not gonna be hundred and twenty pounds. He's gonna be the receiver or some shit. He was a marathon runner, he cannot run everybody, and I'm gonna bulk nope. him up. Once I'm again, gonna bulk him up a little bit. Once again, you he didn't hear run everybody. Uh, nope, wrong. Yes, wrong. man. Wrong. wrong. I don't wrong. know. Bro, this is my area of expertise. You're not gonna shut no, me I'm, down on this. Bro, I'm not here's trying to shut you down. Here's the thing, here's the thing, hear me out. Hear me okay, out. A marathon listen, runners, a marathon my- runner, a marathon runner. I just wrote a book about this. A marathon runner has a certain type of muscle fiber that allows them long distance. All right, okay. they are not sprinters. Football now, players are sprinters. They let will burn a marathon runner any day of the week in that hundred yards. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I was not a football player, a basketball player, a track athlete. I was none of that shit, bro. I was a street motherfucker, and I played shit in the streets. And I went to school and attract scholarship because I trained for that shit. That wasn't in my genetic code. My father was no track athlete. So I, I can't just go with that. I can say that the training can change a motherfucker. It can. I yeah, trained I to get to where I got, bro. Okay. I could be the Olympics. Two, if two I was to my weed, you know what I mean? Two parts. Two parts. I, I trained for that shit. I was that good, bro. And I trained. And guess what? I, my first time running was my freshman year in fucking high school, bro. I had four years of that shit, and I got the college on the scholarship. Full pay. And I didn't train as a kid, so I'm just trying to figure out where's the gene pool, where's the genetics of that. The that shit is here, bro. The I genetics. wanted that shit. Nobody could beat me on the fucking court, on the fucking field, in the fucking fight, because my mentality is one that, fuck a gene pool. I want this for me. This is what I want to do now. And I'm saying that, that got to take a place in it somewhere, man. Like, could that you just be, I, but Smith, could you no. just be an outlier in those instances, no, not even you... that. No, I'll give you a better one. Here's the All thing. Right, There's a it. third. There is a third. There is a third muscle fiber type. There is a okay. type two. There's a type two B where you can have a nice little mix of both worlds. All right. Okay. Those are the people that tend to be a little bit good with endurance, also build muscle very easily and have some power to them. So the whole thing is it still comes down to the science of it. Now, the whole thing is you can train all the fuck you want. If it's not there, it's not there. You can only train what you have. You cannot turn a semi truck into a Ferrari. You cannot turn a motorcycle into into an 18 wheeler. All right, it is what it is. You can only take what you have and condition it at its best. Yeah, I've seen Henry take motherfucking uh, Volkswagens and turn them shits into Ferraris. Like I'm just saying, I've seen him do this shit, man. Like these motherfuckers start with nothing. He t- he puts the motherfucker through insanity and drops the. Down one and, and trains and trains and trains and trains and these motherfuckers go from being a a, a a a Volkswagen to being a Ferrari. All right, so, I've seen that shit happen. All right, let's let's put it in perspective. Well, I'm not, I can't be locked into just one set. It's just one set rule. Listen, That's listen, like I'm sorry. I, I, listen, I'm sorry. I've I've worked in this industry for over two decades, and I've trained all types of athletes. There's no mm. way I can get Henry to jump. You know, I can improve his vertical jump. I can make him a, a more improved basketball player. I can never okay. be getting Henry to bench 315. That's not in his genetic makeup. Or, like, you can, I, I, or even so, like, you could I, probably I, get I, him I, to compete. 
yeah, you could probably get them to compete in basketball, but to what level tier of basketball? I think and, there's a and that's si- the other yeah, thing. and there's no, a, like, yeah, you're there's competing against. You're not talking about the most elite. Yeah, player, and I, um, on the I, planet. Yeah, and I think Edmund Kirsch in his philosophy of the front to evolution, he is striving for perfection. That he wants, is, yeah, yeah, he, he wants, wants, what, he wants he a mean, perf- what does he mean when he's saying the front to evolution? He left it short. So, like, I, I and this is what the I posed the question because it's just us just talking about or speculating what he probably what he's what we're perceiving him to say of um with that. But um, I think is what Black Zeus and Black Smith Zeus was just talking it, yeah. about is just that striving for like this genetic evolution. Like he doesn't. I think he's the just smartest, the, just, the strongest, yeah, the, the best. The and best. Black, he doesn't allow you. Like, to yeah, so monogamy yeah. doesn't because love blinds you. It's like you're just gonna fall in love with somebody where you're not caring well, for the genetic passing of Wait, the best trait. Right? Hitler did that shit, bro. Hitler yes, did that. Yes, 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 yes. He did that. Yeah, that was yes. my point when I was starting to talk to yes. 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 Hitler right. did that shit. Like my eugenics. Eugenics. That. eugenics. Exactly. Yes, I eugenics. eugenics. I mean, pool a certain way. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just well, this like... is no, no. This hold up. There's a difference between eugenics. And and, and and genetic modification. Yeah, eugenics is cutting off. Like, oh, you, it's kind of like yeah, it's yeah. like saying, oh, you you're not good enough. Throw you away, kill you off. This, that, and the other. That's yeah. not what he's saying. He's so saying, you know, well, at least from my my perception, is what he's saying is that if you're going to so so for so like this, females always gravitate to dudes that they feel have resources, have capabilities, have some sort of strength that they can benefit from. They do not mm-hmm. fuck with dudes that, you know, that has no benefits for them. And that is our in our genetic code to say, listen, if I'm going to procreate, I'm going to procreate with someone who's advanced, not someone who's behind. Now, the whole thing is because of our society and the way it is, it's not, it's no longer a matter of like the strongest and the, the fastest and the best and this, that, and the other, like survival of the fittest. Nowadays, it doesn't matter how dumb you are. It doesn't matter how, uh, I don't want to say that. That's not right. Um, it doesn't matter how mentally challenged you are. It doesn't matter how physically challenged you are. We have science to keep your ass alive, keep you living some sort of form of life or whatever the case is. Where back in the day, you know, back in the um, day, it's like, um, survival of the fittest. It's like if you weren't smart enough, if you wasn't fast enough, the lion was going to get you. You know what I mean? Uh, correction, Shu. Eugenics is about the advancement of getting the best gene pool. I just looked it up, and I remember yeah. Hitler. He was striving to get the best soldiers. Like that was part of his eugenics too. Like he was okay. trying to like extract the best gene pool to have the best soldier to like conquer the world. That, that motherfucker, motherfucker was making Captain America's before Captain America was Exa- the movie. Exactly. <laughs> Matter of fact, no, no he's, he's serious. Was Captain America was inspired by the yeah, eugenics. Yeah, 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 it was, yeah. So like, yeah, you're right, you're right. So um, it's just funny because the truth is always funny as hell. We like, damn, this motherfucker was really trying to do. Yes, he was. That's he was. Funny. He really was. And I think, I think what Edmund Kirsch is coming at is like, if you fall in with, fall in love with somebody. They're not gonna necessarily give you the best offspring, quite possibly. And yeah, I think, the, see, that's that's <laughs> flawed. That's flawed because what happens to the people who aren't? So just short people don't get no love. I Fat won't get no love, get no bro. Love. Like, nah, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, you're not even the part that's flawed. Is the part that you got? You got this person and this person, and this is where you get the people that come out with disabilities. Sometimes those genetics don't match. Them. Correct. Them don't match. They I mean, don't work. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess and you're just getting um, birth defects and shit. You know what I mean? Com- it just comes down to, to motherfuckers the- sleeping with third cousins and shit. It comes down to the specific person. I know that there's certain people who would say. You know, my partner needs to be this tall because I'm six foot four and I want my kid to be this tall. I want my kid to be this tall. But guess what? That's what they say, but that don't always happen like that either. Yeah, I was watching something on um, 60 Minutes when they did a special on sperm banks. There was this one white lady. She wanted to produce the next Tom Brady. And, like, this sperm bank, they have, like, questions and stuff for, like, people who want to donate their sperms. But, yeah, like, there's some people who care about that shit. What you about to say, Smith? I was about to say this. That shit with the sperm bank, I meant to say this earlier. The problem with that is, like, the sperm bank, my man, he went to, not my man, but this is white guy, he went to the sperm bank, right? 
he told him that he was only willing to do it twice, like have two kids out of the sperm bank. You know what I mean? They wouldn't have more than five. They gave this motherfucker sperm away to 17, 18 kids. You know what I mean? To 17, 18 people. He, his kids started finding him. Like, they're not supposed to do that. But the kids started finding him. He found out he had 18 kids. He only wanted to have two kids and have his sperm go into two different women. That was it. Mom got 18 kids. He's like, yo, he sued the sperm bank and all that shit. You know what I mean? Was he the it's ideal like, sperm donor? Like, he genetically... It was, it was, he wasn't an ideal... Man, I looked at this motherfucker like, yo, I wouldn't want sperm from this motherfucker. But the, the job that he had... Remember, they don't send pictures. The job that he had... Smith, they don't send pictures. Smith, they just give on. a profile. Smith, what exactly... Yeah. The they would off the, you know, if, I, if he's a, if you know, you gotta go. If this is the engineer, then I want the engineer's baby. I don't want the Oh, art. yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. That's what it was. What he looked like. It's a matter engineer. of all you know is that he's white, black, mm-hmm. whatever. You know what kind of career he has, and mm-hmm. maybe you might have some sort of idea what his in touch in uh, his IQ level is. That's Let about me- it. They don't give you any more information than that. Let's take a step back. Smith. Well, this one lady, like just to go back to the sixty minutes, this one lady, this sperm bag was was able to itemize characteristics of the donor without revealing who the donor is. So she wanted somebody who was over six feet tall. So like, oh yeah, they do. T- yeah, yeah. Like she wanted that. Like if you want, like if you someone who don't want to necessarily have a mixed race kid, you got to know what that gen- you know their ethnic ethnicity is and stuff so once like again that. It, you know when you talk about eugenics it goes right back to what we already do instinctively yeah mm-hmm. right? we instinctively i mean like you know you, women automatically pick the guy who's six foot tall sorry Bradley. <laughs> they automatically pick the guy with a full head of hair they automatically pick the guy who's making a six-figure salary they automatically pick because they see this one as the best one the stud of the stable to give the best offspring. All right. That's yeah. what they automatically do that by nature. Yeah, that's it. That shit becomes problematic. That was the one about 17. The other dude, he had like um 175 kids in county. God and damn. Was <laughs> that was some <laughs> he had some good juice. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm about to send God you this shit. Yeah. Did he get right, paid for question. each one? All right. Well, no, Kel wanted to say something real oh, right there, Kel. Right there, Cash. No, I'm good. Go on to the next question. All right. Uh, the next question, which is, when a boy becomes a man, is when can he define his own legacy? When King of Spain dies, the prince will take his place. Is the prince obligated to maintain all cultural laws and traditions, or should he define his own legacy? Now, when I ask this question, is um, with the fact of... You know, as we become, we go from boy to man, you know, um, what makes you a man is when you start writing your own story, your own legacy, you no longer live with your mom and dad living by their rules, you're making up your own rules, you're figuring out your own life and living for yourself. But when you are living, when you are within a monarchy, does that work? Can you make your own rules? Can you live your own legacy? Can you, you know, um, or are you more, or is your obligation to your country and your, your history and your traditions, you know, supersede your personal, um, your personal desires and um, wants to create your own legacy? How does that tie to the book? You could, you could, you could make your own rules. I just want to that say ties it. to the book in the sense of the, the the prince. They were talking about how like um, that his father is dying, and there's speculation amongst the young people that the prince will be more liberal because of the of his his the 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 woman he chose to be with. Who's All like right. the, the the curator of the museum, right? The curator of the museum yeah. that she's yeah. completely different. So they think that he's going to be more liberal than his um than his than his father was, and his religious more, father, yeah, more progressive and everything. Yeah. Versus versus like the old way and tradition way. While some pe- some conservatives are like, oh no, he has to maintain the traditions of the country and the conservative way of the Catholic church and so forth and so on. So which one do you think holds more weight him making his own way as becoming the King or him, you know, uh, maintaining traditions of what's already been. Smith, go ahead. I know you start. I'll jump in after you. No, no, you go first, Kel. Cause once Smith gets going, nah, go ahead, oh, yeah, Kel. Today, I got about seven minutes left. 
Uh, I think the only way I, f- I feel like they um, I, know, I feel like when you take on like a position of king, there are certain traditions that you still need to uphold. But if you see, you know, just with that whole idea of evolution, if you see that you know there's certain things that your predecessors didn't do that you can do that would advance your country, then I mean I think you should make those changes. I think it gets kind of tricky when you, you know, you talk about the whole beliefs. Like, even if you look at Prince William with the Meghan Markle, who he married, you know, there was a whole bunch of issues within the family because of what her nationality was. I mean, when it comes down to those types of decisions, I would just say more so like, I mean, the, the prince should be able to make those decisions without the, the without caring about how the people feel, but if it's something where he's marrying her and now it's going to put his people, his country at a detriment, this dude, I feel like his, his uh, responsibility is to his country in that sense. So it's cool to be forward thinking as long as it's not to the detriment of your country, not necessarily Mm -hmm. hurting like the opinions of how people feel like, okay, I'm going to be a little bit more open-minded. My people may not be with it, but at the end of the day, it's for the betterment of my country. I mean, I I think it's fine in that sense. Cool, son. Mm. Yeah, I think well, that's all that had to be said. Yeah, yeah. I, I also was going to say it, it depends on um, the person that's up and coming. You know, I don't have to necessarily follow your traditions and values if I felt like they weren't right for our people or right for our culture. You know, if we had a culture of war and we never wanted to make peace because we were just warmongers. And I decided that as the next up and coming prince or king that I wanted to make peace with this clan or that clan or in the world, I should be allowed that. Now, the other part of what I was just about to say is the only time when the, the, the prince wants to change things, they end up trying to kill him. That's the problem. With mm, this, yeah. That's true too. You know what I mean? They end up trying to kill him because no, these are our old systems. These are our own ways, and you're too young to know any better, Cash. You don't know any better. You just got this job. We've been here for fifty years. Why? The, what do you know? And it's like yeah. I'm trying to do something different. So that's you know that's, that's the, the secret hidden council who's been milking <laughs> the system for a minute. Like, nah, you ain't gonna disrupt this bread, fam. Exactly. You already got it. Man. You, ain't, you ain't gonna disrupt this bread. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I agree. It, he, you know, is as long as it's not the detriment to his, the the people that he's mm-hmm. serving, um, or the 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 I don't want to say he's serving his people because I don't like that whole mon- monarchy system. He or she, he yeah, he or she, or she. Well, whatever, man. Yeah, he, I don't, like this is a male podcast. We're gonna stick to <laughs> male pronouns. Uh, <laughs> you about to get banned? I know, right? This part, right? <laughs> you know. You, I like, I couldn't, uh, you know, Sambo. I don't, I don't have much to to add on. I agree, you know, as long as it's not the detriment to the the, the people of his country, yeah. um, you you will hope that the, the the new prince could um to bring in new ideas like T'Challa. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, he's not, not to, <laughs> new prince is not serving his ideas just for some pussy. Basically. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. Like, basically, you know, you still got it, like you still holding our traditions and things and our values. You're not just yeah. like. Open because you just got some ass, and you're like, ooh, ooh, yeah. No, we ain't doing that. Yeah. So, final question. All right, final question. All right, final question is: who do, you think, first. who do you think is Edmund's assassination? Yo, that's the question I was waiting for too. Who's behind us, you know. Who what? Can, yeah, who's behind? That's I Zeus. Say, that's Black Zeus, aka Mr. Sambo. I know who's behind it. And I wanted, I was waiting for this question because I wanted to make a friendly wager with you all about who was behind this. I think oh, it's a know, bishop. Nah, yeah. you know what it is? That's, that's who you want to... Here, here we got this five right here. This is little five dollars right here. You see that little five dollars on it? That's who you... <laughs> who's the gentleman's name? I know I'm going to be right. I, mean, I know I'm going to be right. Oh, feel five, off the two. ante, bro. Hey, I, I saw that. <laughs> Hey, my top set up, you know. I, I gotta go. Don't come here like that, you know. Okay. I don't think it's the. I don't think it's the bishop because in in these types of situations, it's always the do who you least expect. I think it's uh, 
what's homeboy's name? Goodness, I don't know how to slip my mind, but 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 the narrator, his homeboy. Winston? Winston's a That's... robot, bro. No, 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 Winston. Not Winston. Winston. Not Winston. The dude who was talking. Winston. The dude who was talking to Winston. That's all I think it is. Who? Oh, Robert Landon? Oh, yes. Robert no, Landon. Dr. Yeah. Landon is in all the books. <laughs> He's the one that's usually figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. Dr. No, Landon ain't trying to kill nobody. Go it's it's got to be somebody. It's definitely not the. It's it's, it's none not of the, the religious bishop? people. It's none yeah. of the, nobody to do religion. I've read I've read Dan Brown before. I'm going to say it's Winston, man, because this artificial intelligence that it would make um, somehow he put something in there that made Winston be able to control him for himself. Mm. And he got it up. Awesome. I, mean, I, uh, I, I robot shit. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, shit. Listen, wait, I read shit and I watch a lot of shit. So my mind thinks differently. Oh, boy got shot. Well, listen, I'm yeah, going to. He got I'm shot gonna, because gonna, it was set up by the AI. Well, here's the thing I'm going to co sign with Smith. Here's why. When the Admiral, or yeah, the Admiral, um, when he waited till everybody went up into the um into the um into the uh planetarium right and then when he went into the dark hallway he felt the wall to find a slit in the wall an opening in the wall to get to to get into the back now that tells me from my experience and from what i've done in the past is the fact that you need intel from someone on the inside to give you schematics of how that building is structured where the weak points are this that and the other Mm. that could not have been given to you by the bishop that could not have been given to you by the guards that could not have been given to you by edmund because you know all that uh, and 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 then finally that was the thing that triggered it but what i think was the final thing to me was um when they said that um uh uh dude was like um added in added in at the last Am- yeah Ambra said that yeah he Ambra was adding it yeah in. that he was that, added that in. made me that made me suspect because the fact that made me suspicious because everybody was interviewed or something like you know her man just calls I thought that was real suspect I thought that was real suspect she added him at the last minute though yeah, also she added him but she added she, yeah but because she got a message from somebody like yeah. you know she doesn't even know who she got a message from because she didn't speak to a dude directly. You know what I mean? It was, it was, yeah, the time was too short and it was just like, okay, exactly. Right now. So the whole okay. thing is those two things, you know, make me think like the only people that's on the inside so far that we've learned of is Winston and the girl. And the whole thing is the girl obviously ain't it. So I think it's Winston. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with, with Smith. Yeah, and the, and the bishop was too, he, was, he, he, he gave up his service to look at the screen. So yeah. It can't be him because that's too obvious. Yeah, it just seems too know, obvious. Man. I mean, man, the only thing is, yeah, I think I'm, sick, I'm sticking with the bishop. Oh, <laughs> I'm sticking. The only thing is, I'm not gonna lie. Obvious person, though. That's too obvious. But the, now, but the, hold but hold but up, the only thing is, is that Winston. It, it's like, it, what's his motive? That's the only thing. That's why it's like, what's the motive? This is the final installment, right? Or was it the latest version? Yo, it was. It was Langdon, man. <laughs> you think Landon is gonna just just turn? Like hold on, first off, Evan Kirsch was his student. Yeah, just yeah. But, but Lan- so Man, you say that Landon is yeah. wait, wait, is Robert fooling the reader? Because Robert is in shock with us. Yeah, as, yeah that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. So is Robert fooling us as the reader too? I'm telling you, yeah. Because remember, <laughs> we're we're hearing his his his. We're hearing his, his, you know, his reactions to things. Why would know? Landon kill his student, though? One of his best students ever. Especially, Jealousy, uh, you, you got to remember, he didn't even, no, here's the thing. He didn't even that know he was going to this shit. thing. He put him in that little hole, that little shit, that tunnel. He ain't like that. You got to remember, he didn't even know he, you got to remember, Langdon didn't even know he was going to this thing. You know, um, exactly. Whatever. He got, he got hotel and, and, and um, airline or, tickets or did mailed he? to him. Or did he, didn't or even, did he? he didn't even know that he was like in the show. Yeah, like yeah. he doesn't know. Or did he? But no, he was or, did he? or did he? <laughs> or did he? <laughs> I'm out. All right. Hold on to Robert Langdon, Henry, but I don't think it's Robert. All right, That's nah. it. I don't even got to do no work today. I got to keep up with the uh, 1045 tradition. 
Hold up, what's that? <laughs> bro, you on vacation <laughs> for the oh, next wait, wait, week. Wait, 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 I've been trying to hold down until like my family actually gets here. Okay. You just like, I don't even have a reason. I just want to deal with you niggas. Kel's on vacation. And you too, Smith, right? You on vacation uh, for the okay. next week. Yeah. And this dude is out at 1045. Well, actually, it's 1048. As I said, you got 12 more minutes. You might as well do 11 o'clock. So, guys, can last new story. No, I'm good. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> no, you an asshole. Go ahead, bro. 